Hey, what's the deal? It's again, it's your boy Big Star Raw Sports here. I had to actually start the video over again um, so I can invite my man Juni Lewis to join the live video. Um, but just like I was saying, um, you know, this is definitely a treat. Um, you know, appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, this is uh, week three, season three of Legends Week. Um, Raw Sports Off the Court Legends Week with Big Star. Um, tonight, definitely got to treat my man Juni Lewis. Um, if anyone knows anything about Pennsylvania high school hoops in the 80s, um, you know, Abington in particular, um, you talk to any Abington alumni from, you know, 80s, 90s, they'll definitely tell you that Juni Lewis was definitely one of the best players to, to lace up um, and ever do it uh, for Abington. Um, you know, and, and you guys, um, how, how the format goes uh, for anybody that's been tuning in, um, we don't, you know, going to go through, let my man Junie Lewis, um, you know, tell his story. And at the very end, if you have any questions, we're going to do a nice little q and I'm going to just, you know, let my man Junie Lewis interact with the people um, and, uh, you know, ask some questions. So we're going to get my man on here. My man. My man, my man, what's happening? I'm blessed, man. Blessed, finally, uh, you know, glad to be here. Is that you, enough? Hold man. on, hold on. Is that enough lighting for you? I got enough light? Yep, that's perfect. That's perfect. You good? Uh, just, you know, yep. I, I, I'm in no rush. I'm on your time. Just want to make sure you're comfortable. We're going to be here a while. It's going to be a classic conversation, man. So you get comfortable. As long as you're good, I'm good. No, I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Silent, silent. So, 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 right off top, man, just want to, you know, explain a few things. Just want to, you know, mention a few things before we get started. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for your time, man. Honestly, between me and you, I've been looking forward to this, this sit down with you for years, man. Um, you know, I was there in Norristown when you came down to Oak Street Park and was putting on shows. I was a young boy. I was there, man. Um, so you, you've been in my mind and on my heart for years. So when I, when I started this platform and started, you know, finding all the legends and, you know, interviewing them, you were definitely somebody on my mind that I definitely wanted to reach out to, man. So, um, you know, two things with this whole, you know, off the court legend series. Um, one, I just like to, um, you know, pay homage to individuals like yourself, you know, cause I never want individuals that were especially around in the, in the eighties and nineties. that saw you who, I don't want people to forget your legacy. So this is just my contribution um, in being able to just, um, you know, solidify and pay homage to, to, to you. And then also with the younger generation, you know, I definitely don't want new kids to uh, you know, basically just want to educate the younger generation on individuals like yourself, man. So, so that's why I do what I do, man. And, um, you know, I appreciate, you know, appreciate having you on as a guest, man. All right, all right. First and foremost, man, let me give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, man. Um, most important. Uh, I appreciate you. I've been watching what you've been doing. Uh, I saw you had Billy Owens on for a little minute there. That's right. That's uh, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my man. So, so um, hey, man, I'm, I'm enjoying what you're doing. You're doing a great thing, man. And all I can tell you is just keep doing what you're doing. You know, God's going to continue to bless you. I know he is. And you're doing a wonderful thing, man. No doubt. I appreciate it, man. So uh, this is the format. You know, we're just going to, um, you know, we're just going to chop it up. You know, let you let you tell your story, man. I, I obviously I have some questions, but I'm gonna just you know give you the freedom to just tell your story, and I interject questions in between. Um, but I'm gonna uh, start with a little little thing, little, little something, something fun, just to kind of get us warmed up. It's called ten random questions. We're gonna get into that. You know, you're gonna tell your story, and at the very end, I'm gonna let you um, you know interact with the people. If anybody has any um any questions, we're gonna do a nice little Q and A. Just let the people ask you some questions at the very end. Is that all right? That's no problem, man. No problem. All right, Silent. All right, so so right off top, 10 random questions. I'm going to just throw, we just got some fun. I'm going to just throw 10 random things at you, all right? Go ahead. All right, so back in the 80s when you was coming up, you graduated what, what year, 85? 84, 84. 84, okay. So back in the 80s, you know, late 70s, early 80s, you know, your high school days, what was the sneaker of choice? What was like, what if you had one sneaker that you could have rocked through you, throughout your career in high school, what would that one sneaker have been back then? Uh, Dr. J's, you know, some doctor, some Dr. J's, some Converse's. Gotcha. So that was that was the there was the joints back then. Yes, sir. Dr. J's. No doubt. Um, what what was your favorite TV show growing up? Ultraman. Ultraman. Ultraman was my boy. Yes, sir. No doubt. No doubt. Um, your favorite cartoon growing up. Uh, Bugs Bunny. 
Bugs Bunny. I like Bugs Bunny. Yes, sir. No doubt. No doubt. Um, you know, 80s, coming up in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, you know, the hip hop era, everybody was either, you know, break dancing, beatboxing, DJing, rapping, whatever. What was you? Did you dabble in break dancing? Was you, you know, would you a B-boy at all, Judy? You know what? I, I just love listening to rap, man. Um, when, when, especially when Run DMC hit the scene real hard. Um, I was no true break dancer or nothing, man. But uh, but I always loved the rap, you know, Run DMC, LL, you know, uh, uh, Public Enemy, all them boys, man. I, I was in, I was into that hardcore. No doubt, no doubt. Um, you, who was your favorite um NBA player growing up? You know, when you were coming up, when you were younger, you know, kind of growing, you know, in your game and all that. You know, who who did you idolize? Uh, you know, possibly from the NBA watching. Ooh, that's a good one there. <laughs> um, but if anybody, if anybody, I'm gonna say it would be Dr. J. Dr. J. Dr. J. Yeah, I, I love Dr. J, man. Yeah, what? Just curious, out of curious. I, I love. I, what, now go ahead. I was just about to say, you know, what was it about his game that you enjoyed? Now I like the way he dunked. You know, I like the way he shot up in the air, man. Uh, like he, he, he looked like he just took off on on a rocket or something. Sometimes, man. No doubt. But I, I liked him because. He, 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 he was he was he was all around to me. He was all around. He could do everything. No doubt, no doubt. All right. So, uh, summertime. You know, you're at a cookout. What's uh what, what's on your plate? We, you know, at any cookout. What, what what do you usually put on your plate at the cookout? I was just right. I was just give me a hot dog and hamburger. That's it. Something simple. Give me a hot dog and a ham pretty pretty, pretty yeah, basic. Yeah, just a hot dog. Go ahead. Go ahead. No doubt. Um. Um, growing up, besides basketball, what are some other other sports that you played? Football. I played football. Um, I, that's it. Uh, I played baseball one year, but I never liked it too much. But I played a lot of football, man, with the Abington Raiders and all that. And, uh, the the Glenside, Glenside team, the Willow Grove team. I played for like three different teams in, in the little league football. Got you. Got you. Um, in, in the, in the, the suburban area, like in your area, in the Abington area, Philly area, who were who were some of the players, you know, a player or two that you may have admired and kind of looked up to regarding basketball? Some players that were, you know, either came a couple years ahead of you or during your time, you know, in, in, in the 80s. Uh, well, one player I admire most is my man, Big Bob Heath, man. Mm -hmm. um, Tiger, we call him Tiger, man. Um, Tiger, Tiger was, he was, he was my man. And there was another brother, a guard back in the day named Freddie Williams, Freddie Fly Williams at Abington. I used to love the way that brother used to roll too. Got you. Got you. Got you. Um, going back to the 80s, you know, late, late 70s, 80s, I love that. that. That's my era. I love it. Um, everybody was either, you know, watching WWF wrestling, all that kind of stuff. So if, if you were a wrestling fan back in the day, who was one of your favorite wrestlers coming up? Andre the Giant. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. That was my man. Mm. No, no doubt, no doubt. All right, last question of the ten random questions. Um, uh, what, what's the most points you ever scored in the game at any level, high school, college, in the league, anything? I played in the Philippines. I played in the uh, league in the Philippines, and I put up sixty-seven. Wow, wow. Yeah, in the PBA, the Philippine uh, Professional League. Got mm -hmm. you, got you, got you. That's what's up, man. Well, I appreciate you kind of getting tuned up with me, man. Um, you know, um, how, how I like to do these um, these Legends Week interviews, man. Um, I don't, I don't want to get in your way of you telling your story. You know, with, you know, and we, with me uh, with, with my questions or whatever, kind of steering, you know, the direction of whatever direction you want to talk. So uh, I'm just going to give you the freedom, man, and the respect to just tell your story. So um, it, it, I'm gonna just let you tell your story, and I'll, I obviously I have some questions, but I'm gonna just I'll, I'll interject, you know, whenever I need to. But um, I'm gonna just let you tell your story, man, and, and by way of just introducing yourself, man, to the people again. And um, just just start us out by just letting us know uh, where where the Juni where the Junie Lewis uh, story began, man. Well, basically, it all began uh, in, in a little town called Crestmont in Willow Grove. Um, wonderful town, man. A town of mostly families. Um, but also, you know, my father was from North Philly, so most of my life on the weekdays, I'd be in Willow Grove in Crestmont, and mostly every other weekend, I'm down. Uh, my, my my grandmother lived on Warnock Street, the projects on Warnock Street, and my aunt lived at 10th and York, my Aunt Jean. And uh, so my father would come and get me and take me down North Philly during the week, weekend, and then I'd be in Willow Grove during the week. So, you know, I, I had I had the best of both, both worlds, you know. 
I, I you know, be, being up in Willow Grove, you know, I, it was some, it was hardcore with some brothers up there. But man, my people down in North Philly was real. They 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 they, they were some strong people. But when it came to basketball, uh, I learned everything from uh, Sam Rhines. Uh, okay. I know you know his son now. Yeah, uh, young Sam. So, so you were his so, father. So, so, so to this generation that know the name Sam Rhines, you're not talking about young Sam. You're talking about his pop, Big Sam. His pops, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that man took that man took me under his wing, man, and he taught me from from dribbling to jab stepping to shooting, free throw shooting, uh, and he had me in every Sunny Hill camp. He had me uh, even with in the Hill Sunny Hill leagues. He had me. He had me uh, uh, all over, um, and the man, he really put his effort and time into me, and he just didn't do it with, for basketball. He taught me how to be a young man and how to carry myself, because mm-hmm. um, I grew up in a, a single-parent uh, family with my mom. She raised seven kids, and I was the youngest. Mm-hmm. So uh, Sam is someone I really looked up to, and he really taught me the game of basketball in a way that, you know, I didn't know that I was going to have the ability, uh, the af- let me say the athletic, the way how athletic I was. I was very athletic. I didn't know I would be that athletic. Mm-hmm. But he gave me the mental part of the game to whereas when I, he just taught me to dominate. That's all he would say, dominate, mm-hmm. take over, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and that's the only way I, I, I played, so so you know, growing up in Willow Grove, man, and in Crestmont, man, it, it was a wonderful time. Uh, I, I used to shoot up Norristown, so we played, man. We uh, uh, when we shoot up Norristown, we played with, as young boys, man. And then, uh, then as I was growing, going through high school, now there was a brother at Norristown with me named Darren Queen. Darren Queen and me and that brother used to battle. Yes. That's sub uh, used to battle. Uh, uh, let me tell you something, me, Darren Queen and was at Norristown. Grady Minnick was at PW. Martin Sally was at Truman. And I was at Abington, one of the best years of basketball in the Suburban One League. Wow. Um, and all and we all was in the same league. And we battled. You know, each <laughs> all of us were just dunking on each other. Wow. You know. <laughs> yes, sir, man. Great listen. Yeah. Grady, Grady Minnick, Grady was a Grady was a beast, but Dan was out of everybody. Um, uh, but but I enjoyed that time. I enjoyed others, man. And we became we all became got to, we we got to know each other uh, and enjoy each other uh, through through uh, playing in different leagues. And uh, so after that, basically, you know, I signed with Pitt. You know, out of high school, because uh, you know the Big East was popping then. That's when you had you know, Hewen at Georgetown, Mullen, Chris Mullen at St. John's. Pearl Washington at Syracuse, uh, my man Kelly at Connecticut, uh, Lil Adams at Boston College. The Big East was jumping in, and that's when Pinkney you know, won it, uh, the national championship. Uh, but my only issue was, you know, it was me, it was myself and a, a, another guard from Detroit. His name was Demetrius Gore. Okay. Um, that was my man. But we was, man, we was too wild, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so the coach Chipman said one of y'all got to go. Gotcha. We can't have both of y'all here, you know. Gotcha. So, you know, the funny thing was, I had to. So, um, and when I when I told everybody I was transferring, and I was watching the NCAA tournament that year, and this team South Alabama was in the tournament that year. So, just, and they just, had to, hey, just to make sure I'm clear, how long was you at Pitt? How long did you stay there? One year. Oh, just one year. Okay. I was at Pitt one year. Got yeah, it. me, Charles Smith, me, Charles Smith, and Demetrius Gore. Wow. Um, so, so the, the the funny thing is, is when I transferred and I got back to uh, Crestmont, um, this coach from South Alabama, and he had the Sixers uh, first draft, first round draft pick with him. His name was Terry Catledge. Mm-hmm. If you remember him, mm-hmm. with Terry Catledge, they came. And they, they came to uh, to my house and said, "Listen, we want you down South Alabama, you know. You know, we we was just in a tournament, and T- Terry had just got drafted by the Sixers, and I just said, all right, you know. But I had no I had no choice because I was it was like September, and they were the, one mm-hmm. of the only colleges that started 
like we they didn't start school until like October. Okay. So yeah, I got in down there, man. Uh I got down south, man, and I I, I loved it, man. Um I slowed down when I got down there, you mm -hmm. know, because I was running wild at, in Pittsburgh. Okay. You know, and when I came home, I was running wild. Gotcha. You. you know. Um I mean let me throw that in there because you know I've you know, I've, I've been through a serious drug addiction, man. You know what I mean? And uh, lost a lot, been through a lot. And uh, but when I got down there, man, I, I really calmed down and got myself together, got my act together, to the point where, as uh, me and another guard, his name was Jeff Hodge. They called us peanut butter and jelly. I saw, I and, saw, um, I saw a news clipping. I saw a paper clipping of that with you, you holding up the peanut butter and him holding up the jelly or whatever. I saw, I saw that, I saw that yes, photograph. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. And and we complimented each other mm -hmm. because I was loud, I was loud, brash, hard, and he was calm, relaxed, and he was very mature. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I mean, when we were on the court, man, him and I, we, we right, from day one, we just, we, we was like we knew each other for years. And mm -hmm. uh, we took it to the point where he ended up getting drafted by the Dallas Mavericks and I ended up getting drafted by the Utah Jazz. I went to, I was the 48th pick and he went uh, the 51st pick to okay. Dallas, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and then, and then we both, you know, we, we both had our shot. Now I'm going to say this, I got to say this, you know, um, this is something that really, uh, this, this is what really took me to a down spiral and, and, and where I fell into a drug addiction is when, you know, Jerry Shalone, uh, God bless his soul. He just passed away. The former coach for the Utah jazz. Um, you know, before the last day, last cut, he came to me and said, uh, Junie, I said, I tell you, man, can nobody in the league touch you when you when you out there? But he said, your only issue is you too immature and you're not going our way and you're going to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. So I got to let you go. Wow. You know, and he was honest with me. Mm -hmm. and now, back then, I didn't see that part. Uh -huh. I'm like, really? Yeah. As I grew and as I start to go through some things that that he he actually said, you know, you're gonna end up going through these things. Now I see what he was saying. You know, mm -hmm. I would have killed myself. Yeah. Um, I missed out on a lot of money. I signed a nice contract, man, and to see that thing getting ripped up in your face and they telling you, you gotta go, oh, that God. really hurt me. Uh, mm -hmm. So no, th th then I went overseas. I played. I, I started off in Venezuela. Okay. I played in Venezuela. Then I left, and then I went to Argentina. I played down there. Then I went over to Belgium and played in Belgium. Then I went to the Philippines. And so, I have to, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you good. Go, go ahead. You know, after my Philippine run, man, uh, after my Philippine run, I came home, uh, and I couldn't get over the NBA thing because, I, I mean, I knew – my talent was there. My ability was always there. But my mentality, I was just too, okay, let me be honest with you, man. I just like the party so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wanted to be, yeah. I wanted to be out there. Um, uh -huh. And it just, it, it, it took me down. So when I, when I stopped, you know, the place I, I moved to when I finished Norristown. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Got uh, well, Swede I, I Street. You, I, moved, I, would, I was on Swede I would, Street. I would see you up in. I would see you in North Sound a lot. Yep, for sure. Yes, sir. I went to Swede Street, man. And I and you know and to be honest with you, I was I, I hung with the gangsters and the killers on Cherry Street boys. Mm -hmm. And 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 they taught me. They really taught me the street. So, mm -hmm. so like uh, and then you know they had the summer league up the town too. Yes. So, and, and 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 you know, and when I when I when I played, you know, one thing about me, no matter what I was doing, when I stepped on the court, man, when I it's, it's dominate time, and them brothers up mm -hmm. there appreciated what I was doing. Um, but you know, Nars Town was kind of wild though, man. So Nars Town <laughs> took me for a little loop too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so you know. I got I, man. I got to the point. I got homeless. I, I found myself. I was down on uh, Huntington Park, Hun Broad and Huntington Park is at the A plus. There's a, a A plus right at Broad and Huntington Park, and 
I was washing windows for a dollar and fifty cents so that I could get me a bag, man. Wow. That's how bad it was. That's wow. that's how bad it had gotten. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I, nobody wanted to mess with me in the family. You know, I was a mess, man. So where you where you live at now? They sent me up to a place called the Gardenzia House in Harrisburg. I'm familiar with Gardenzia. Okay. I'm very familiar with Gardenzia. Yes, yep. sir. They yep. sent me up there. And I stayed up there. And I and when I when when I left there, they sent me to a halfway house in, in a place called Wilkesbury, uh, -huh. uh PA, mm -hmm. where I'm at now. And man, when I got up here, man, uh I went to church and I met this bishop, uh Wallace E. Smith. Uh and that man, man, when he preached, he he blew my whole, he blew everything that was in me, man. Mm -hmm. uh, to the point where, you know, I began to see and say, you know what, man, you know, it's it's over, man. You 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 got you got to get this together. I already had kids already, and I could, I was too stuck on the street to take care of them at the time. Uh huh. Um, but eventually, man, I heard that word got to, to me so strongly, man. That you know, listen, man. My whole life did a three hundred sixty degree turn. Mm -hmm. uh, God changed my life, man. And uh, and I got up here, man. I uh, I met my wife. Uh, I got my kids back. My kids were born in Norristown, my two. My my now my son now he plays up in Canada, named Eugene Junior. Mm -hmm. Eugene Junior. He plays for the Montreal Alouettes. And my daughter just graduated her last year with at Seton Hall University, Alexis Lewis. And I got those two up here, man. I didn't bring them up here. I didn't know they were going to be superstars when it comes to the sports. I brought them up here because I had got my life together. Uh huh. And man, it turned out, man, with my son just, I mean, he was all, all, all state basketball. Uh, Alexis, my daughter, was all state basketball, all state field hockey. Because, and I put my, and I kept telling myself, you know, they have the ability I have. Uh -huh. But I will not allow them to go through what I went through. Uh huh. Because what I went through, I don't. Not many people make it out of what I went through. Uh huh. So I, I made it a pledge to God and myself and to my children that I'm not going to see none of you go through, go down the path I went down. Uh huh. Because it's a dangerous, it's a dirty, and it's a, it's a terrible path, man. Mm hmm. So, so, so now, man, you know. You know, I got ordained as a minister. You know what I mean? I, 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 I pastored a, a church up here uh, a few years ago. I've been uh, assistant pastoring at other churches, helping other pastors. Uh, actually, I'm about to open up a storefront church in a little town called Edwardsville, right outside of Wilkesbury, within the next uh, six months. Um, but, man, listen, man, I, all I got to say is, you know, basketball did a lot for me. Basketball uh -huh. showed me a lot. Uh, however, I, I got to be honest, man, you know, just growing up in a single parent home, you know, and, you know, and I always tell people, you know, I, I was raised by drug dealers, man. I was raised by people that was out there. Uh -huh. That's who taught me what I know, you know, and, um, and, 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 and it, and it kind of like, it, it took, it took me for a loop, you know, um, that's why I thank God so much that he turned me around, man, that I am not that person no more. Uh -huh. You know, now, am I, am I perfect? No, by no means am I perfect. Do I still make mistakes? Yes, I still make mistakes. But one thing I know for sure, man, is that what I do today, I'm always trying to help somebody, mm -hmm. help somebody get better. That if they on that path that I used to be on, man, I wish I could help you off because you got to mm -hmm. want to come off. Yeah. But I would do anything for this young generation to try to let them know that there is a path that you could go down that you might not make it back if you try it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man. So, you know, uh, I wanted to bring that part of my story out because a lot of people know my basketball story, man. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, yeah, I know what it's like signing autographs. Everybody want to be around you and everybody <laughs> want to chill with you. But, man, when that ball stopped bouncing, when that ball yeah. stopped bouncing, and you and you and you you weren't mature enough to listen to the instruction from the right people that were speaking to you, mm -hmm. you're in trouble when life really hits you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm teaching these young brothers today that I run into, especially the ones that, you know, they got you got all the talent in the world, mm 
and you're going to be nice, and everybody going to tell you you can make it. Uh -huh. But you're not realizing only one out of a few thousand making it. That's right. And when, when the ball stop bouncing, if you don't take heed to the instruction from the right people that was trying to give it to you, you're going to find yourself in a place where you're going to say, how did I end up here? Wow. Wow. Hey, you if, you, if you can, um, well, I, I'm, I'm going to go back into in, in your past a little bit. But real quick, you know, since you mentioned, I want to stay here for a second, man, because, I mean, it's one, it's a lot of lessons that we can all learn. I appreciate your transparency. So if you can, like, I'm just I'm just replaying the story in my mind. You said when you were at Pitt, you know, you were you were, you was wild. And then, you know, what I mean, when you came back home, you know, you was wild and just party too much and then, you know, led led to the drugs, stuff like that. Help help me to understand, like, you know, help me help me to understand those days and, and, and that adversity and them times with the drugs and kind of break it down, man. Just, you know, stay there for a second and just kind of break tell that story a little bit, man, and what that was like and how that was pulling you away from your dream. Yeah, it, it was tough, man, because it was like, uh, you know, I was uh, basically I was I, I was hard headed, you know, and I only listened to people who made me feel good. Mm. You know, I didn't listen to the people who challenged me mm. or was trying to tell me, man, listen, bro, this is going to come your way, man. I'm not, you know, me, I ain't trying to hear that. I'm Junie Lewis. You, you know yeah. who I am? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and that's that's the mentality you get. Because then you got the other the other brother in your ear telling you, man, don't don't listen to all that. Mm -hmm. You the man. Yeah. You do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You know, not realizing, man, it was you know, like I said, now part like even from 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 my senior year of high school going in the pit, man. I mean, I, I I dealt. I was just I was with the brothers that you know they sold all that stuff. They sold everything. You know they did, and that's who I was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't comfortable around nobody who just wanted to do right. If you wanted to do right, <laughs> I didn't want to be around you. Yeah. You know, I want to be around. Listen, I, we, we going out. We we gonna be up for five days straight if we can. You know, <laughs> not really. And it was it was uh, it was something, man. I'm telling you, uh -huh. man. That, the, that and I don't know. Even some of the coaches would say to me, "How in the world?" You know, my coach Al down in South Alabama a couple times. He'd be like. Man, you cut out on curfew, and, I, and sometimes I wouldn't even make it to the arena until the game was ready to start. Wow, drunk, you, you know, not drunk, but you know, coming off a of drunk, go, going into a game, you know, because wow. you know, at that point I didn't know no better, man. You know, as my thing was, as long as I produce for you, and if, if I put up twenty, my twenty, and grab eight, nine rebounds, and we win, don't worry about what I do. Wow. You know, not realizing, man, that they were really caring for me. Uh huh. You know, and I was just being hard headed. Yeah. Thinking I knew it all. Yeah. 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 Wow. And yeah. Were, were, were you like during, those, it, during those times of, you know, the drugs and, you know, stuff like that? Were you, were you still working out and, and, and putting into your body, you know, training and stuff? Or you was just, you know, or not, it wasn't, you know, he was kind of neglecting that, that part as well. No, no, listen. I, Man, I used to, uh, listen, man, I, I played high half of the time, man. Wow. You know what I mean? Listen, man, I played high half of the time. Uh, so it was like, that's all I knew, mm -hmm. you know? Now, but we were, you know, like, people was doing a lot of cocaine in the 80s. Uh -huh. not, so in the, in the late late 80s and, you know, mid-80s. Mid so everybody I knew had powder cocaine. So listen. I take a couple hits of that. I get on the court, man. I'm shooting to the moon, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, but like I said, I knew no better because that's all I knew, mm -hmm. you know. And I wasn't trying to hear nobody. Yeah. Uh, and and but you know, and, and it's, it's a tough story, but you know, people don't even they they would never understand that. And, and I'm not the only player that that went through things like that. Uh -huh. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of us have, you uh -huh. know. But me, I, I like to be transparent. Of about course. me, uh huh. You know what I mean? Because you know, like I said, man, I, I, my, my son has a master's degree from University of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. My daughter just got her master's degree from Seton Hall University. Mm -hmm. That's, that's now. That, see now, that's the comeback right there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's the comeback. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Hey, take me back to your to your to your younger days. 
when did you first fall in love with basketball? What's your first like memories of falling in love, falling in love with the, with the game of hoops? When when Sam Rines when I met him, when he uh when he he would take us he would take us all over the, all over the city man mm -hmm. he'd have us all over Philadelphia man playing everywhere. And he was just telling, let me know, man. He said, boy, you're going to be something else. Yeah. And Sam just, yeah, he put the time into me, man. He did. He put the time into me. And he tried everything. And actually, I know he was, he had, he, he, he coached LaSalle and he was trying to get me to go to LaSalle at a, at a certain time. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but, 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 but they, they knew I, man, y'all ain't want me to stay in, near Philly. <laughs> and when I left Pitt, it was, when I left Pitt, it was South Alabama or LaSalle. Yeah, and 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 I said, y'all don't want me to stay in uh, this close to the crib. I'm going. I'm, I'm gonna be in North Philly dead somewhere if y'all leave me up here, man. Wow, yes, that's mm -hmm. so. Hey, what's um? Uh, one one thing I like to hear about um are the diff like all the names. So you know, you seem like you have a really good memory. Like you remember all the names and everything. Take me back to those summer league days, like dur during high school and stuff like that, like the Sunny Hill leagues and, you know, all the, so what were yeah. some of the different, um, like leagues you played in summer league, not high school ball. We'll talk about Abington in a second, but tell me about some of the different leagues, summer leagues you played in and some of the players you remember playing with and just any memories you have of those days. Yeah. Well, I remember always playing down the Hill league, man, with Pooh Richard, Howard Evans, man, Rico Washington, uh, man, I'm out, and in Pittsburgh, they had the Ozark League, man. Marvin Bailey, uh, man, man, that that was they were the greatest times playing in those leagues, uh, especially the ones in the Sunny Hill and the Ozark. That league in Pittsburgh was tough too, man. Mm -hmm. Them boys was balling up there on the Hill District, man. Um, but um, yeah, but we played a lot. We had a league uh, called the Alberthorpe League in. Uh, it's, it's, it's outside of Abington, near Abington, man. We had the Alberthorpe League, man. And we learned from Marshall. Marshall, God rest his soul, too. But Moose. Moose. Moose was the man. That was my man. But Moose, Moose taught me a lot uh, watching him playing in the leagues. My cousin Jamie Fitzgerald. Jamie, was, that was my boy, man. And uh, the, the, them boys was hard. Kirk Mayo from uh, Norristown. Kirk. Yep, yep. Man, that was my man. Then we, I mean, and we, we, we played in all... And Grady Minnick, that was my number one right there, man. Uh huh. Uh, when it came to playing with me and Grady, man, uh, we, I, I, one, I always wish we played together. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the toughest cat, I'm telling you, the baddest cat, I mean, from uh, playing in the NBA summer leagues and everything, the baddest cat I done ran into that you just can't stop though for real was a brother named Heidi Hart. How, yo, look, look Heidi right? Yeah, look, Heidi was a beast, man. Yo, I remember, I remember Heidi Hart, man. I remember him, dog. <laughs> yes, yes. That brother, that brother had it, man. I'm telling you, that brother, he was one of the most difficult players I had to go up against, man. Wow. Um, I remember I enjoyed Hart, it, man. Yeah, yeah, man. That, that brother, man, he, he had it, man. He had it. You know, I'm his good brother, man. But why, just watch, you know, when it comes to the most difficult player I ever played against is him. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. I mean, That's even crazy. even even checking John Stockton wasn't hard what? in practice when we when we practiced that John it was, you know, it was but Heidi Hart was a whole different ball game, man. Wow. That's crazy, man. I, you, I you never beat him. You brought up a name right there. I would definitely remember him. I yeah. definitely remember him. <laughs> he one of the only cats I just couldn't beat. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. man. So, all right, so so back in your so back in the summer league days, you know what what gets the kids going is the is the James Harden step back, the crossover. So for you, when it was showtime back in the summer league days and all that, like what 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 was what would get the people going regarding your game? Like what, how 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 did you get the people out of their seats back then? Oh, when my, my cousin, especially in the Norristown League, when my cousin Wade Fisher, so we had a play called North, North Philly. Uh -huh. And what I would do, I would be, I would be at the post, I would be up by the foul line, and and but but I'll, I'll be sitting there, and I look at Wade, and I just holler North Philly, and I roll around, and he'll just put it up there, and when he put it up there, when I catch, listen, listen, if you're too late, you dunked on. 
<laughs> you know, and that was our that was our favorite play. We called it North Philly. Me and my cousin Wade, man. Uh, and and we used to get Nars Town. And that's one thing that's that one thing they know about me up there, I will dunk on you. Yes. You know, <laughs> that was my thing. Because yeah. I knew that's what made the people jump. Of course, of course. I remember though, you know? when, I remember when Crestmont would come to town when you played with Crestmont, right? With the Crestmont team? Yes, sir. It was you, Chuck yes. Grasty, right? Yep, Charlie, yep. Wasn't it a boy named Buddha that was real strong and stocky? Buddha. That's my cousin Jamie. Yeah, my cousin Jamie Fisher, Buddha Black. Yes. Listen, yes, sir. when y'all came to town, it was like watching the NBA, man. I would sit there and be like, yo, Crestmont playing today? I'm there. <laughs> Yeah, but let me say this, man, and be honest with you. I ain't gonna lie to you. This is this is the truth for any of them brothers to tell you. We play basketball from sun up to sundown, man. Uh-huh. When we grew, when we was growing up. But we knew each other game like you could never imagine. Like everywhere we would go to West Oak Lane, Norristown, Reading, Allentown, North Philly, and any and we would take, you know, two car loads. Uh-huh. Anywhere we went, I don't care who they put on the court, we're going to beat you. We're going to tear you up the first game. Not because we was better, mm -hmm. but we knew each other game because that's uh -huh. all we did. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's one thing. That's one thing I got. I loved about uh, th that Crestmont basketball is that we, when I say we start at 9, 8 in the morning, and we didn't stop till the lights went out at 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 and 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 that that was that was a thing, man. It, it was love, man. It was love. Hey, was for love. for any younger generation, you know, for young kids that are that are watching this interview now and they may see it later on YouTube or something, describe your game. Like, you know, we know you, you use a high flyer dunker. Just describe your overall game and, and what your strengths were back then. That you know, what, what coaches appreciated about your game. Because my game was uh, my see, I was. I was I, I was a I was a center and a okay I was a center and a point guard's body. I got you because you know I I, play, I played down low. I could I could rebounding was my thing. Uh huh. Drop, dropping dimes was my thing. Mm -hmm. Shooting was my thing. So I I from when Sam Rise taught me, I kind of I mastered the whole all around game. Uh huh. You know, and when I played. If they had somebody 6'9", I got him. Mm -hmm. You know? If they had somebody who was killing us and he was 5'7", I got him. No doubt. <laughs> you know? And uh, and I was the one talking big smack, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, listen. Listen, if you couldn't take talking, if you couldn't take it, either you was ready to fight <laughs> or you just, listen, because I'm talking to you the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> the nonstop. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, you know. So I try to say, listen. I love when they talk. Talk, but talk to me, please. Talk to me. <laughs> oh, talk trash to me. <laughs> yes, yes. That's funny. Hey, so, 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 tell me about your um. Let's 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 talk about your um. You mentioned Abington briefly. Tell me about your Abington High School experience. You know what your years were like there. Any any big memories? Any big games? you know, rivalries, you know, just, you know, tell me about your, your Abington High, uh, your legacy you left at Abington High. Yeah, man. Listen, man, we, Abington, man, listen, one of our rivalries was Norristown. When Abington and Norristown got together, it was Sparks, man, you uh -huh. know? Uh, but like I said, you, you got to hear it. See, this is what people ain't seeing. When I tell you that year we had four Division One players going against each other every night. Mm -hmm. Grady Menick at PW, Dan Queenan at Norristown, Martin Sally at Truman, and me. And man, when we played, each each game was a rivalry mm -hmm. because we all were similar. Uh -huh. All of us could jump, all of us could dunk, all of us could shoot, you know. And it was like you don't know who was going to get the best of who at at, at any night. Mm -hmm. um, but man, I love Abington, man. I, when it came to that in, in the eighties, early eighties, too, Abington, man, basketball. That's all we, we. I mean, we we always was in the state playoffs, you know. Uh -huh. um, and I mean, we we kept a beautiful crowd. Our crowds were crazy 
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, our games were packed constantly, man. Uh -huh. you know, it was just, like I said, when the team, when Norristown comes down, or, or we go up Norristown, you know that, you know, and, and them cats be bet money on them games too, man. <laughs> Big money, yeah. you know? So, well, what, so it's any, like, you know. Are there, are there any big games that you remember or any performances that you had or just, you know, what were some highlights that, that kind of like, like, okay. No, I just from, remember we was at PW. Listen, we was at PW. We playing Grady now. Grady Minnick now, man. Man, I just, man, I got up so high. I, I look, I dunked on them so hard. Grady, the whole team. I just talked the whole and all my homies from Crest that was there, they all ran out on the court before the game was even over. <laughs> I just was like, yo, it was it was crazy, man. I loved every minute of that day, man. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And good enough, don't get me wrong though. Now Grady got his all the time. Uh -huh. But at that that game, when I dunked that, listen, I couldn't believe how high I was up there. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. What, what what were some no. of your, what were some of your accomplishments that you had? Um, you know, like, like how many how many points did you wind up? You know, did you end up with and all that kind of stuff in your high school career? Do you, do you remember any of that? Yeah, but see, yeah, yeah, you gotta understand. I only played varsity for two years. Oh, eleventh okay. and twelfth grade. Yeah, I only played eleven, and I I, I was the first player at Abington ever to score a thousand points in a two year in two years. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so now my senior year, my junior year, I, I only averaged like 12, 13, 12 points, 13 points. Uh -huh. My senior year, I averaged like 25 points, 13, 14 rebounds. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I put up 40 like four different times. I put up like 40, you know, four different times. Um, but but no, Abington, man, that, listen, man, you know, I was all suburban. Uh and, I, and, and my, my greatest accomplishment when I was uh, the MVP of the Round Ball Classic, Dapper Dan Round Ball Classic. Oh, the Dapper Pittsburgh. Dan. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, wait, so, yes, so sir. We, and, uh, we got, listen, we got to put that in perspective because for, 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 the, for the young kids, you know, Dapper Dan's not around anymore. So Dapper no. Dan was before the McDonald's All-American game. Is that correct? Or was it the same? Yes, sir. No, it, it was right. It, it was right before because it was – Pennsylvania All Stars against the United States All Star. Okay. So so and and they had listen they had Chris Washburn, Charles Smith, uh, the the boy that played for the Clippers in Ohio State, uh, Gary Grant. Uh huh. They had him. They had Danny Manning. Mm. You know. And these were and, some of the players that were in the Dapper Dan when you were in it. Yeah, yeah. They they were on the, they were on the U.S. All Star. Wow. And I, I, I gave it to him, man. I gave it to all of them. I gave it to all of them, man. And uh, and I got the MVP, you know. But you got the MVP and to Dapper Dan. Yes, yes. Wow. I was 28 points, 28 points and 14 rebounds, man. Wow. Yeah, man. It was it was sweet. And guess what, though? I ain't even start. Are they started serious? all the boys from Philly. Are you serious? They started all the Philly boys. So, so who who else was in the game? Who else? Who 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 was on your? Who was on your team? team and who was on the other team? It was me, Howard Evans. Um, oh, I forgot. Uh, Rodney Blake that played at St. Joe's. Uh, Martin Martin Sally was on. Martin Sally was there. This boy from Aliquippa named Woods. I forgot his first name. Mm -hmm. Named Woods. They was high on him. And, and the rest was all Philly boys. Uh, wow. I know it was a boy from Martin Luther King. I forgot his name. Uh huh. But um, man, I said, oh, and 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 you know, I already had signed with Pitt, so all the Pitt media was like, "Well, Joe Junie Lewis playing the Dapper Dan, but you, he ain't starting." I'm like, man, when they let me in that game, <laughs> all I can remember is Sam Ryan said, "Dominate, <laughs> dominate." And they, right. listen, I didn't come out no more after that. Wow, that's crazy. No, that's crazy. I didn't come out no more after he let me in. Wow. Well, so what? So that so that twenty eight points. What was was it? Jump shots, dunks. You know, fit, what what type of game was? All, it? all, all. I was shooting jumpers. I was dunking. You know what I mean? And I was rebounding. Listen, I was down there sticking Chris Washburn. <laughs> I was sticking Charles Smith. These cats were. Seven foot and six eleven. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Cause I was long, man. I was long. Uh -huh. And how tall are you? you how, know? how tall were you? How, how tall were you for people who don't know? Like six, uh, six three. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm six three, but man, my 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 vertical was like forty three, forty four, man. Wow. So, so jumping and I and I was one and I timed re, like rebounds. I I I, I master timing it. Like uh -huh. I knew I, I knew when that ball was gonna hit the rim and wherever it came off, I was at the place where it came off of. Got you. Got you. Wow. So crazy. That's something Sam Ryan's taught me. Yeah. Sam Sam taught me to master the rebound. Yeah. Hey, what what do you most um you know cherish or, or you know about those high school days? What do you most cherish about when you when you reflect and think? You know, like had these type of conversations about back in the day. My my homies, man, my homies. I ain't gonna lie, my Wade Fish girl, you know, my cousin Dre, my cousin Tim G, uh, my cousin Boover, man, them, you know, I, I did it. I did it not just for me. I did it for them. Uh huh. Gosh. You know, I, I love them boys, man. We was like, man, we we all. It, it was just like I, they were so happy, and it made me happy that they were happy. Got you. You know, got you, got you. And, you know, so so just them. They, my homies, my homies in Crestmont, man. That's what, that's what pushed me to keep going. Got you, got you. All right, so I know one one thing thing that things that are really big today is like a you know aau and all that kind of stuff but one thing that um was really big back then was like camps and stuff like that you know whether it was like the you know abcd camp or you know five star so what, what, what were some of the camps that were big back then that you may have participated in and then who were some of the players that i went to five star i went to five yeah i went to five star uh ball uh dunbar coach was my coach uh bob wade Okay. Dunbar High School. Dunbar in, in Baltimore. Um, uh huh. Baltimore Dunbar. Yeah, ba Baltimore Dunbar. Bob Wade was the coach back then. Uh huh. That's that's the one that he went. He, and he was my coach at Five Star up here. And when he took me in, he was just everything. Like I said, everything Sam Rhymes taught me. Sam Rhymes taught me. Uh huh. I took it everywhere. When I went up there, I showed. This is what this man showed me. Mm -hmm. Uh. So uh, no nah, camp, but Sunny Hill was was one of the better camps, and I uh, never forget this time. It was me and my you name you said uh, you call him Buddha Buddha Black. My name yeah. is Jamie. Yep. It was me and him against it was me and him against Pooh Richardson and Bruiser Flint. Whoa! That was, so it was me and Buddha. Yes sir. Yes sir. <laughs> it was me and Buddha <laughs> against Pooh and Bru and Bruiser. I ain't got to say no more after that. Wow. <laughs> I ain't got to say no more after that. Well, so what happened? <laughs> what, do I got to say any more? <laughs> you, what? Yo. Me, listen, that's what we did. We gave it to whoever. Wow. It went down. Yeah. <laughs> it went down. Wow. It went down. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it went man. down, man. Hey, yeah, so yeah. what um did you I know uh after you know these days after all the high school basketball is done, everybody goes up to Concha Hawking and plays in the Donna Frio classic. Did you That's, did you play yeah. up at, at the Donna Frio in Concha Hawking? Look, look, man, look, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Listen, y'all don't get mad at me. I'm gonna be very transparent. No doubt. Man, when when we went up to that league, my me and my cousin Dre went up there, man. Man, and we went up to that game, I was whew, Man, I was, and we got rocked. Wait, wait, wait! Hey, the, the reception. We got hey, you, hey, hey, Judy. Hey, Judy, your reception's breaking up a little bit. The, 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 just a bad connection, a little bit. Okay. You better. Um, yeah, it's it's better. It's it's a little bit better now. All right. Yeah. So, so repeat, repeat All what you right. said because it started breaking up. I, I, it got a little choppy. You said no. Listen, no, no, no. When we played in the Fino League, the, the Contra Hawkins League. Yeah. The one time I played, man, it, it was after the, it was after, it was after our high school season was over. Yes. And uh, man, we played. We went up there to play one game, man. I was, y'all don't get mad at me, y'all. Keep it man, real. Man, I was high as a kite. Man. Wow. I was high as can be. Wow. I ain't know where I was and we got rocked. They rocked us. Did you? Yeah, we got rocked. So so what so what man, I, I don't, man. so what type of high? I mean, what you know, what, what what was what was you know? No, I was weeded out. I was weeded out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I drove up there, me and my cousin, man, and we was man, we was, uh, we had the car like Cheek and Charm, man. <laughs> I 
from Chess, man. We had that thing like Cheek and Chong, man. Wow. And I'm like, and then and I got a nerve to go try to play. Listen, step on the court like that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, oh. Didn't work out. So y'all so got beat that night. You know, Don Frio was one and done. You know, you lose, that's it. That's what I'm saying. We got rocked. Wow. Really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I was like, what is you doing, man? You... Man, take me out the game, man. I'm good. I can't I couldn't even breathe. Wow. That's crazy, man. So so man, that was, that's I'd never forget that one. Yeah. Do you remember who y'all may have played or who was on your team then or, or not not at all? No, we lost to Grady Minnick. Grady Minnick them had a squad. We okay. lost to Grady them. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, they, they they gave it they, he gave it to us. He Grady gave it to us that guy. Wow. Hey, so um, AAU was was AAU big back then, or AAU wasn't wasn't a thing back then? Nah, nah, it wasn't AAU. It was just like, like it was like Sam Rines. Okay. You know, it wasn't called AAU, but he was he was considered more like a, back in that day. He was like an AAU guy. Yeah, but he was just a guy that he he took you around. All he took us, man. Sam took us all the way up to Carlisle mm -hmm. to play Jeff Lebo numb in the, in their part in the project. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he took us some calls out, man. We we up there planning like Jeff Lebo and his boy. Mm hmm Yeah, so so yeah, man. It, it's, it's 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 it was a run. I loved it though, man. I loved it. I loved every second of it, man. Yeah. Hey, so take me through um it's interesting. I like to talk about like the whole college recruiting process because we you know when you compare the eighties to like two thousand twenty. I mean, that was, you know, like about 30 years ago. So, you know, yeah. so, you know, or, or more. So these days, you know, the college recruitment process, I'm sure is a, little, a lot, a little bit different than it was back then. So explain what the college recruitment process was like for you. And then what ultimately like led you to Pitt and then, then, then South Alabama again as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I you know, my, my, my choice, honestly, was I wanted to go to Monmouth College in New Jersey. Okay. Because they had just got a black coach. That was like their first black coach they ever got. Okay. And they came all the way up to Crestmont and picked me up in a limousine for my official visit. You know? The reception broke up a little bit. Repeat that one more time. All right. Let me let me try to move over here. Hold right, on for earlier, a minute. Earlier when we did the little test run, it was better. Wherever you were sitting at earlier, it, it was better earlier. Okay. All right. See, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a executive manager at a, a resort in the Poconos. So I'm in one of the rooms right now. Got you, got you, got you. And I, you know, I, mean, I got, a, I got a few uh, groups here, so I, I can't even leave the premises. Got you, got so you. So sometimes, uh, most, sometimes in these rooms, your, your phone service goes out. Got you, got you. All right. Well, yeah, but I tried to find a room where it would stay. Solid. Room. Yeah. All right. All right, let me know if this one stay or not. Yeah, I, I can see you. We you got can, me? Yeah, we, it's better. It's, it, it worked. We good right there. All right. Yeah, that's good right there. So you said um, Monmouth, Monmouth College, you, you, was, you were saying that they had the black coach and everything. Yeah, so, you know, it took me a visit. I liked it and loved it, liked it. But see, my sister, she had, she played at Pitt uh, from from uh, 77 to 81, uh -huh. uh, my sister was a point guard for Pitt Women. Oh, wow. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, she, she, uh, she actually, they won, they won the state championship uh, in 77 uh, at Abington Girls High School basketball team. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, my sister was, she was, Debbie Lewis was, she was something else. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but she, she convinced me that it would be better for me to go to Pitt than Monmouth. Got you, got you. But you know, but you know, I I don't think she realized, you know, because because she was always in college, that bro, your little brother <laughs> done got wild. So. He done got real wild. What what? I don't think your, she saw that. What what were some other schools that was recruiting you besides Pitt and Monmouth? Like what, what were some other schools that was trying to get at you around that time? Well, I had Boston College. I had Boston College at me, you know. And I had Georgetown at me. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, I mean, they, they weren't super strong, but they were at me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the school I wanted to come at me didn't come at me, and that was Penn State. Okay. I, I, now, if, if they would have called at any time, I was going there. Mm 
got you, got you, got you, got you. Um, but you know, uh, I'm the St. Joe's, you know, but let's say how everybody in the city, uh, said Cheney wasn't messing with me because he knew I was wild. <laughs> got you. Cheney said, "We ain't messing with that boy, man." I know, I know. Cheney said that. Yeah. <laughs> Cheney said, "I'm not messing with that Junie Lewis boy. No way, no way." Hey, mm -hmm. so, so tell me, tell me about, tell me a little bit more about your your pit experience, and and until until the time you you said you you know you, you left pit, just about you know any any basketball memories, games you played, you know any highlights there, and yeah. then yeah, man, I, I love that. that time. We, I remember we played when we played Villanova. We beat Villanova uh, the year they won the championship, '85. We came, we came, we we came down here uh, at uh, at the Palestra. They beat us. They came up to Pittsburgh, man, and on on we was on CBS wow. Channel Ten. Wow. We beat we beat them by thirty five. Wow. And you know, what I, mean? I, I I ended up with like thirteen points that game too. And who 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 did um, who did Villanova have then? Oh, they had Ed Pinkney. Guy McLean, Dwayne McLean, the Jetson boy. Uh, that that was the year they won the national championship. Yeah. When they beat Georgetown. Georgetown, exactly. Wow. So y'all, yeah. wow, that's legendary. Right yeah, there. we lit them up. We lit them boys up when they came to Pittsburgh. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That's that was crazy. one of the best games. Best games, you know. And the Georgetown game, I remember. I, I dunked on Patrick Hewitt one time. Wait, wait, you know wait, I mean? whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind. Don't explain that again. What happened? I caught him. I caught him. He they'll say he I didn't, but he jumped a little bit and I caught him. I caught him. <laughs> I caught him. I caught him. Yo, that's crazy. So you got you got you you caught, yeah, you, caught you caught Pat you and slipping, huh? Yeah, he was slipping because he I don't think he, he thought I could jump that high. Yeah. <laughs> so when he when he seen me up there, he just he was too late. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. He was too late. Hey, that, that's what I was going to ask you. What, what what are some other players you know that may have went to the NBA? Were you know, some really good players that you went against when you was at Pitt? Um, you know, in those days, some other players you, you remember going up against? Oh man, Pearl Washington. Let me tell you something. Pearl Washington at uh, Syracuse. Uh huh. And Earl, no, the, but the man Earl Kelly was at Connecticut. Man, mm -hmm. now he, he he he. I think he was the, one of the best guards I ever played against. Wow. You know what I mean? Earl Kelly was he he was he he was the truth, man. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I ain't giving nobody over my man Heidi Hart. Though. No doubt, Heidi Hart got that. No doubt. And so and so, explain. Help me to understand a little bit more about like when you said you was wild at Pitt, and just you know, ex and, then, mm -hmm. and then explain you know what what was going on around that time, you know, regarding that that other side, and then what led to you transitioning from Pitt. Just you know, explain that a little bit more. <sighs> Repeat that one more time. Okay. Yeah. Now I was saying. Now I was saying. I was just saying. Um, help me to understand a little bit more about like the flip side when you said. You know, all, all you said was. You know, I, I was wild at Pitt. I was wild and you know, it was a lot going on. You know, ex explain that a little bit more and then explain what led to you. You know, leaving Pitt ultimately. Well, I was wild, man, because uh, we, uh, me and my man Demetrius, man, we, I mean, we we stayed up all night drinking, chasing chicks all night. Uh, and we was doing it consistently, constantly, mm -hmm. you know. And then all we was by the Hill District, and all the cocaine dealers, the, they was they was right there with us. And you know, he was from Detroit, and and, and you know, and I'm and I'm from down in Philly, man. So they they looked at me and him. They would whatever we wanted, they would give us. Uh huh. You know. So we were just like, man, is, is this easy? Mm -hmm. We were like, is this easy? So, but everybody know with me and him, man, it was like they two party animals. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was, it was, and that's all. I mean, and don't get me wrong, we balled out. Yeah. We played. I mean, we went to class, but when it was time to go out, <laughs> we didn't know when to come home. I understand. I understand. And then so what? You know? And then so what led to you leaving Pitt? Again, and then going to uh, South Alabama because Coach said you you, you got to go, man. He said you you because I because Demetrius was six six. He was six six guard, and he, he, he you know I mean they liked me, so he was like one of y'all, Junior, you got to go. Yeah, he said I'm gonna get you wherever you want to go, but you got to get out of here. Wow. <laughs> he, said, Bro, he was like you got to get out of here. Wow. I'm like, coach, 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 coach. He's like, no, man. He said, I'm not. And he said, I ain't going to tell nobody all the stuff you be eating. 
there. But you got, oh, yeah. but you got to go. <laughs> yeah, he said. He said you got to go, man. And he, and and that, like I said, when I look back at it now, I understand why. Yeah. You know, I, I understand yeah. why because I would, I would, man, I would never put. I, I ain't putting up with that stuff. I was putting people through, man. You yeah. know, that was, and so, then, you know, but. And, and then you, so you had you had another opportunity. Um, you trans, you transferred to uh, South Alabama. So just you know, take me through your experience there. I know you won some type of championship there. I saw you with the with the picture with the trophy and everything. Tell me about your um, you know, sum up your, your South Al Alabama experience. Man, look, man, when I went down there, it was like it's everything slowed down like a hundred percent. Uh huh. Lifestyle, you know, it wasn't wild. Them brothers down there was calm. Uh, everybody did everything real easy. They, they were very hospitable, man. Um, them, them, them brothers and sisters down there love each other, man. Mm -hmm. Down south, man. Yeah. And and it, and it and it and it and it and it helped me really slow down. Uh huh. You know, we had, for, for for real, man. I for a minute, I, I stopped doing everything. You okay. know, going out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I I ain't really start back up until like my senior year, but. But my two years before my senior year down there, I grew. I kind of grew up a little bit. Okay, you know, and focus, and it got myself to get, got my mental game back and got it right. Got you. Um, because I knew I had no more chances after that. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 I knew this was it. Yeah. What were some of your most memorable basketball experiences um, at South Alabama? Oh man! Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! No, playing in that Mobile Civic Arena, man. That Mobile Civic Arena, ten, you know, nine, ten thousand, mm -hmm. and we pack it every single game. Yeah, and when and when, and when you came on off, man, we, we you we listen, man, we was beating, we, we was killing people, man, on that court, man. We was destroying them, and I loved it because uh, when you when you came to Mobile, man, you you know we br we brought that city together, uh, black. Cause it was a very prejudiced place, man. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. But our basketball team brought brought uh, the blacks and whites together. Uh huh. Yeah, they. I mean, they actually really put up with each other back then, and it was pretty tough back then for mm -hmm. for for at, at a racial point. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know? But but our team had all the all the alumni, white, black, man. We. We did things at that school that they they never had saw before. Yeah, wow. And, and what you you won a championship there? Some type of champ? Was it a, a conference championship or? Yeah, we we won the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, I'm just saying who we had in there. We had UAB, um, Jacksonville University, um, Western Kentucky, uh, VCU, uh -huh. VCU. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it, man, the, the league, the league was love, man. It was, it had some great guards in the league, uh, really great guards in the league, and man, it was like we blew, we blew through the tournament, we blew through the uh, Sun Belt Conference tournament in Charlotte. We, we just, we walked through the whole thing, man. We beat everybody by thirty points. Man. Wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah, cause, cause, you know, because Jet, myself, peanut butter and jelly, man, we wasn't playing. Yeah, okay. Jeff and I were like. No, where, where did y'all? I'm where telling you, where did y'all get that nickname from? When did they? When did they get y'all? Where, where that? Where that? I came made from? it up. I made it up. Okay. I made it up. Yeah. Cause I was like, listen, man, we need some exposure. Cause he dropping twenty one, I'm dropping twenty, and you know, and and I'm like, so I said, listen, I'm gonna give us this thing, peanut butter and jelly, cause you smooth like jelly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like sticky like peanut butter. Yes. So once once we got it out there, and we everybody just start they start. Man, everybody jumped on it after that, man. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, man. What's, what's, yeah. What, what was one of your biggest? What's one of your biggest games? Um, and then, then we'll transition uh, talking about something else. But South South. What's one of your biggest games that you remember? You think? Well, when we played VCU in Richmond. Okay. Um, Jeff, uh, in practice, uh, the day before the game, he high sprained his ankle and he couldn't play. Oh wow. And and I had my. All my cousins from Crestmont. I had 125 cousins down there. Whoa! <laughs> All my homies, they came. Everybody came down to Richmond. And, look, and it was in Richmond? Yeah. 
Yeah, I was VC, it was at VCU. Mm -hmm. And I put up 41 on them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I scored my points and Jeff points. Wow. Yep. <laughs> you scored your 20 yeah, and his yeah. 21. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. I put up 41 and all, with all my family and everybody, man. That's dope, man. That's you know? awesome, man. Hey, so um, so so what? So so you you ultimately were drafted, and, and and you know you drafted by the Utah Jazz. So take me through the process. Like, did you have an agent? Did you have some workouts? Take, yeah. me, take me through the process. Well, listen, and then talk about draft night. Listen, I had a coach who was uh, he came to me. Coach McKinney said, "Listen, man, I got this uh, agent named Richard Woods. You'll be as he said, you'll be his first basketball agent." But he, he said, but he's our football agent, like Bo Jackson. He was Bo Jackson agent. Wow. Uh, so you was his first basketball yeah. client. Uh, yeah, I was first. Kenny Stabler, the quarterback he used to play for the Raiders, was his, was his, uh, he was Kenny Stabler's agent. Gotcha. And uh, so he was like, you'll be his first basketball agent, man. Man, this man gave me, man, that man gave me like $25 in cash, brought me a brand new Jeep. Uh, when the season was over, he, he gave me 25 G's and Cad brought me a Jeep and just said, come on, man, do your thing. Wow. You know? Wow. Um, but why did you give me $25,000, man? Wow. That's what I said. <laughs> man, do you know what you're doing? doing? Man. What, what you, what you I, doing? I don't even want to go there, man. I don't even want to go there, man. <laughs> I don't even want to go there. I don't even want to go there. Oh, I'm telling you, I said, why in the world are you going to give me $25,000 and a brand new Jeep Cherokee <laughs> Limited Edition? <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, man. Man, I said, man. Mm. So, you know, that that right there took me to, <laughs> you know, when you, when, listen, you know, you used to have, like, you know, 400, 500, 600, 1,000. I might give you $25,000. Mm. And you you and you was in my mindset. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh no, no, you should have did that. Wow. You should have kept that money. You should have kept that money and told me to just work hard. Yeah, just work out. Just just train and work out. Just work, work out. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. So but no, Richard Woods was a good he was a good agent though. I yeah. mean, he, he did he did everything he could. Yeah. And you know, and I got the chance to meet Bo, you know, talk to Bo, talk to Kenny Stabler. You know, he, I remember Derek Thomas used to play uh, for the uh, Chiefs, and he played for the, he played for Alabama, a uh, linebacker. Yeah, yeah, he, him also. He had a lot of the Alabama players as his. The, he was their agent, got an you. Auburn player. Got you. So with the, le leading up to the draft, like, is you know, did you have to go to workouts and all? How how how'd that go? And then and then tell me. Yeah, yeah, we went to the. Uh, they got to us the, the the camp in Chicago. You had to get invited. Okay. So yeah, you know the top. Me, me, Jeff and I both got invited to Chicago. Then they had one also too in uh, Virginia. Okay. Um, the the invitational for the guy to be invited. So that's when we have Tim Hardaway, wow. uh, Mookie Blaylock, all of us. We, man, listen. Wow. Man, listen. We all. And, but you know what was crazy though? When when the games or practice was over, they was like, "We going out with Junie." <laughs> That's the only way you can listen, man. Listen, y'all better come on, man. <laughs> y'all you know I mean, yeah, I'm gonna make sure everybody get it. <laughs> you know, Yo, so they, they all wanted to go party and hang out with you, huh? Yes, wow. yes, yeah, and he, all of them tell you that's because that's all I knew, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, that's all, all right, I knew. What, what was it like? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, but on, on the flip side, like. When you when you think about life now, what do you, what do you think about that? Like like they wanted to go and party with you because you're the fun guy and know you know how to have a good time, but almost like like what I'm trying to think what I'm trying to say like like with, with that ultimately being one of the things one of the devices that kind of pulled you away. Like what do you think about mm -hmm. that now? When you kind of when you when you rethink when you think about that now. It, it just uh, every day, man. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard. Uh, it's hard, and I gotta fight that every day. Mm -hmm. Because when I think about the ability I had, and and I always was a good person. I always a good person to people. Uh huh. But I, but I was out of control, man. Uh huh. You know, I was so out of control, and I couldn't control it. Mm hmm And and then when I think about it today, man, it's just like you know, 
I just thank God I'm not in that same mentality now. Uh huh. Yeah. That's that's all. And I'm thank God that I can help my kids not to walk into that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but walk, but, but walk into the right mentality. Stay right. Man. That's right. That's right. That's right. But you don't, you don't <laughs> know. You know. I tell my kids, uh, my my fifteen year old, no, you don't, you you don't want to be like daddy. You don't want to do it like daddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. No. You know. Wow. What um? <clears throat> so 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 tell me tell me what it was like um draft night. So take me back to that night NBA draft. You know, you was waiting for your name to be called. Tell me about that. Yeah, I was waiting, you know, and I got a call because uh, they they uh, Blue Edwards got they, Utah had the twenty first pick too, uh -huh. and they told me they were I they were they might pick me twenty first, okay, because between me and Blue Edwards, mm -hmm. and and I'm sitting there, and when they got to the twenty first pick, or the I, and I ah uh, they picked Blue, right, so I said all right. Um, so, you know, I'm sitting and waiting, but I knew they were going to draft me because, you know, they had, was already in contact with him. Um, so when they, the 48th pick, when they, when, when they, you know, called my name, man, it, it was, it was, no, it was a surreal moment. Yeah. Unbelievable moment. I mean, to be, to be drafted, to be only like 50, I believe 56 or 58 people got drafted uh -huh. out of all the college basketball players in the United States of America. Yeah, you gonna tell me I was one of those that you gonna pick? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when when I today when I look at it, I say to myself, like, man, out of all the college basketball players that were out in in, in that eighty nine year, uh huh, I was one, of, I was one of the top 50, 50 few that was picked to yeah. pick it by the NBA, man. Mm -hmm. That was that told that, that that tells you that. You know, I had some kind of game. Yeah, yeah, for sure, <clears throat> for sure. So, so, so you, know, you get, so you get picked up by the Utah Jazz. They pick you up. So, just, 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 you know, sum up your Utah Jazz experience. Tell me some of the players. You know, some of your teammates. Then, um, just any any experiences. You know, memorable experiences in the league. You know, t just tell me, tell me about that. Well, you know, every every day, getting up. Uh, Practicing with Carl Malone, man. Wow, it was tough. Wow, <laughs> because no, no. Listen to me. I t I told you I talked a lot of trash, man. Yeah. And when I talk trash to him, when 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 Stockton needed to, a pick, he hit me a couple of times coming off a pick, man, and put me flat on my face, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Carl Malone, you know. But he liked me though. Yeah, you know, he really didn't like me because he was just was like, "Boy, you, you're a funny dude. Just, you're, <laughs> you're a funny dude." Man. But he, but no, when it came to him and John Stockton, they had a relationship. You wasn't breaking through that. Okay. Yeah. You know, no, you wasn't. Yeah. Dis disrespecting John was disrespecting Carl. Okay. You know. Yeah. And and I knew no better. You know what I mean? Uh huh. I, I talked trash to John, and he was really he used to get really pissed off at me. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, now if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't have said nothing to the brother, man. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You know. So, 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 how, how were you playing? Like, did you how how long were you um in the league and with the Jazz? And you know, what were some of your highlights? Of your career? I was with him till the last cut. Till the last cut, it was between me and a guy named Jim Less. Uh, Jim Less. Okay. And that's when Coach told me he said. He said, you know how much better you are than Jim Les? Mm -hmm. But he said, Jim Les is more mature. And he said, Johnny Coach said, you're out of control, man. Wow. So you were still kind of living the out of control lifestyle then yes. as well? Yes. Yes. Like, describe it to me. So, so, yes, so you guys are, you're, 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 you're playing, you're working out, you're playing some games or whatever. And describe, like, the other side that was, that was, that was a conflict for, 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 for your NBA, you know, for that lifestyle. Yeah, the other side was just when practice was over, man. Let's get, let's get to the club. Let's get to the club, and we're gonna stay there all night. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna then we're gonna find a speakeasy after the club. Mm -hmm. And then you gonna you gonna come late to practice, smelling like alcohol. Wow. 
You know? Wow. You know, not even realizing I didn't even know you could smell the alcohol on me. Wow. Drinking all night. Yeah. I didn't know I was smelling like it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So what, that was tough. Man. Were there were there any were there ever any confrontations due to that? Like you know, like you know, coach pulled you aside and said, "Yo, man, like you know, what I'm saying what's going on? or any 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 like any confronts like that or or it was kind of just like a, yeah, un, yeah, un, 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 yeah. Un, unheard of thing, you know? Yeah. Well, Coach Alone told me, man. He said, "Johnny, uh, all right, let me give you an example, man. We in the LA Summer League. Uh, we finished playing Indiana our last game." We got a flight leaving uh, LA airport, flying back to Salt Lake City at seven that morning. I didn't get back to the hotel till 10 that morning. Wow. Our flight left at seven. Wow. I ain't get back to the hotel till 10. Wow. And, and, and the bell dude looking at me like, you know, Utah went back to Salt Lake City. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a, and guess what? I was in Compton all night long. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was. It was I, there was no control. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know? so, 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 tell me about life after the NBA, or you know, you know, once once you left there, what happened? What happened after that? After that experience? But when I left, the, when, when the NBA, you know, like I said, I went overseas, man. Okay. And I played in like f five different countries, man. Okay. And, you know, I made, I made really, I made decent money, mm -hmm. you know, but I was spending as I was getting it. Uh-huh. Um, uh, and, you know, and, I, and after, after playing from overseas, man, I just, I, I just went down all the way downhill to the bottom. Okay. Got you. I went to the bottom of the barrel. Got you. And you mentioned like... Yeah, at one point, you was like homeless, and you know, the window yes. thing. And what 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 ultimately led to like led to that? Um, crack cocaine. You know, that crack was that crack was just uh, at, man. That, that 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 led me to the most the worst part of my area of my life, man. Mm -hmm. You know. That really is just, it's just, uh, whew. I just thank God that I made it out of it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I honestly, I mean, it, it, it's, it, that was the worst journey I ever been on in my life mm -hmm. is being addicted to that drug. Mm -hmm. Because when you're addicted to that, my brother, ain't no more control. No more. Wow. You know. So what? At what point do you? At what point did things start to kind of go? You know, back in the upslide. I think you remember. Yeah, like, was was it going to the rehab, coming out the Wilkesbury, yes. or was it? No, no, no. Going to Harrisburg, man. Okay, Gaudenzia in Harrisburg. Yeah. Okay. And plus, and, and we was like by the river and everything, man. Uh huh. And we used to walk that river, man, and you know. My eyes start opening up again, man. Wow. I'm like, and I'm missing it, man. And I was going, you know, to they got, you know, uh, and, and thing called Narcotics Anonymous, mm -hmm. going to meetings and meeting people, man, and yeah. meeting people from all over, man. Yeah. Were, were you were just, you still were you still like, were you still in shape at all, or are you, you body? Heck yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> man. I mean, but would you tell, you know, so you're at Gaudenzia with your counselor and this and that, and, you know, would you tell them, yeah, I'm, I'm Judy Lewis. I, I, I was the hoop. And, like, yeah. would, you ever, would you ever play ball? No, ball? they knew it. They knew it. Oh, they they knew it. Okay. Yes. As soon as they do, when they do your whole background check, they know they find, then when they find out who I am and where I've been and you was drafted by the Utah Jazz and you messed everything up and all that up. I'm like, yeah, yes, I did. Wow. Did you guys? So even when I went into rehab, everybody was... Everybody would find out I was I got drafted. Okay. But in the NBA. Okay. So, and don't get me wrong, because that brought me favor. It brought favor. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, but everywhere I went, people found out. Okay. Even when I tried not to even let nobody know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, do you 
do you uh, if if they're okay if uh, one of the uh, one of the last couple questions I ask you is like if there are any if there, on on your timeline of life if there were any things that you wish you could have done over or regret what what would they be? Wow, wow, that's that's a that's that's a question there, man. Mm. Man, you know it's hard because the wife I have and the, and the kids I have, my two youngest kids I have right now, mm -hmm. man, I, if I didn't go through what I went through, I would have never met my wife. Mm -hmm. And I never would have had these two beautiful, wonderful children, man. Well, that's beautiful. That's awesome, um, man. So, you know what, man? I just say I, I, I would probably go through the same thing to get to wife right now, man, and, and my two children that, I mean, all my children, but these, these two that, that, that God gave me outside of addictions and, and this wonderful wife, man, who sticks by my side day and night by all costs, by any means. Yeah. No, nah, I regret nothing because I would have never met them. No doubt. No doubt. That's beautiful. I appreciate, I appreciate you sharing that, man. I appreciate that. Um, what, yeah. what is what is what is your what is the your overall you know basketball journey life um, taught you you know what have you learned you know from your experience? I learned this. I learned, man, that you could that you can you can you know you that you can you can fake out people. You can fake out yourself, man. But but and you you can't fake God out, man. Mm -hmm. And basketball did one thing for me. It taught me one thing, man. How to don't stop. And whatever I'm doing, I got to dominate. Mm -hmm. I got to dominate. You know, my mentality today, man, is dominate. Mm -hmm. And whatever I'm doing, I just don't want to be, like, good. I want I want to, I want you to, you know, I, I want you to say, what, who, how he do that? Mm-hmm. Just like when I was on the court, uh -huh. I I played I played for for the fans. I didn't even play for me. Yeah. I played to make people say, "What the heck he done to?" <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. Um, one of my one of my last questions um, that I have is, um, you know, it's going to be a lot of players, you know, a lot of young players that are in high school now watching this, you know, hearing your story. They may watch it later on YouTube or something like that. Um, what advice do you have for for younger players um, that are coming up that are trying to you know get get that college scholarship, you know um, some some keys to success or just any advice you have for for the younger generation? Wow, wow! All right, I'm gonna give you this one. It's our last one because my phone is almost out of juice. That's where that worked. But listen, listen, listen! I want to tell any young brother out there that you're playing ball, you're a star. Everybody telling you how good you are, and you are good. But I want to tell you, man, listen to the people that are challenging you to do better. Don't keep listening to the people who are telling you how good you are. Listen to those who are challenging you to get better outside of basketball. Because one day the ball will stop bouncing. And when that ball stops bouncing, if you, didn't, if, you, if you don't build the right character, or have the right attitude, you're gonna find yourself in a negative place. Mm -hmm. Now you don't you might not believe me now, because I didn't believe people back then. Uh -huh. But I'm telling you, it will come to pass. So listen to those who are trying to point you in the right direction, even if you think that they're telling you something that you ain't trying to hear. No doubt. Powerful no doubt. words, man. Powerful words, man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, man. I, I definitely received that for myself. I appreciate that, man. Hey, so, I appreciate so, you, man. Say so, so, that, so. That's pretty much it, man. Um, you know, I appreciate your your Thank time. You. I appreciate your transparency. This interview was everything that I thought it was going to be and more. Um, thank you. You know, I just want to say thank you, man. Um, how how much juice you got in your phone? You you you. Is your phone's about to die. And I got like 13, 12 percent. All right. Well, um, we, we pretty much um before we you know, before I sign out, man. Um, are there any shout outs you want to give, or just you know any 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 last minute things you want to say? Now I want to give a shout out to Nashtown. You know what I mean? 
I want to give a mostly shout out to Crestmont, to all my peoples. I want to give a shout out to my Aunt Jean, uh, Ethan Marshall, North Philly, my cousin Cheryl, all them down in Philly. And then I just want to give shout out to anybody who believe in Jesus Christ. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You hold on to it. Hold on to it. That's right. That's right. Hey, before we tune out. Let me, let me say this. Yes, I want to say prayer. I want to say a prayer of, of, of just God touch that, that brother Floyd family that, yes. that would happen to him this week. Yes. Touch that family. In Jesus' name. That's right. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yeah. Hey, so um, um, and if, if it's nothing else, um, I'm gonna open it up to, to the people. Um, if there's anybody watching right now, first I want to say thank you to the people that have been tuned in from the start. You have heard from the legend Junie Lewis, man, my brother, your brother. You know, the man who's you know given so much to the community, given so much to the game. Thank you, Junie. So hey, if, if you guys um, he, Junie's phone is about to die, but if anybody has any questions, um. Type a question. Put a put a question on the screen right now. We'll, we'll go like one one or two questions uh, before my man Junie has to sign out. Um, if anybody has any questions from my man Junie Lewis, go ahead and ask. If not, I ask you one more question, Junie. Um, when you were with, um, okay, here we go. Uh, my man Derek um, Do Right Jackson. Um, he wants to know how long had you been clean and, and you know clean and sober from drugs. 15 years. 15 years. Yes, sir. No doubt. No doubt. Um, question. I got a question. You won it. You did you win a championship up in Narstown with Ken Dues? Yes, sir. I won in Crestmont and then the next year with Ken Dues. Oh, so you won back to back. Back to back, baby. No doubt. No doubt. Back to back. My man Rich Bolt Knight wants to know who are your mentors? My my number one mentor is Bishop Wallace E. Smith of the New Covenant Christian Fellowship Church in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Got you. Got you. My man James Nelson Stewart, um, you know, you mentioned a few earlier, but rehash it, you know, mention a few to him, uh, uh, you know, uh, rename him again. Um, he says, um, uh, who were some of the players in um in the area that you remember in high school? Remember, you know, some of the some of the D one players you said you mentioned going against in high school. M mention those guys again. Yes, Grady Minnick, Martin Sally, Darren Queenie, and me. <laughs> you know, the county, the county boys, the county boys. No doubt. No doubt. Hey, question. I got a yes, question. Sir. I got a good question. Back then, if you could have took a, a county all-star team and, and played against a Philly all-star team, how do you think that would have turned out? Oh, back, we would have lit them up. <laughs> no, doubt, no doubt. No, for real. No, no. You give me that point guard. Uh, Grady Minnick had the best point guard that the uh, the uh, Stackhouse. Uh -huh. PW had Stackhouse. And you give me Stackhouse, Grady, me, Martin, and Darren. No, it's a deal. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, he said, my man, my man Nelson said Terry Samuels. Remember that name, Terry Samuels. Mm-hmm. Got you. Well, all right, man. I, I guess that's about it, man. I'm gonna let you go, man. Um, I appreciate you giving me. Uh, a God bless you, man. Yes, sir. Hey, hey. So, so we'll, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For sure, man. It's been a pleasure, man. God bless you, you know, man and God. I appreciate it. Um, so just to let you know, um, tomorrow I'm gonna upload this entire interview to my YouTube channel, and I'm gonna send you the link. I'm gonna text you the link so you can share it with your family. Thank you. And the interviews, you know, share with your kids. The interview is going to be there forever. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you, man. God bless you, man. Love. Yes, sir. Love, love. We're going to be we're going to be in touch and uh, we definitely got to stay in contact. All right, man. All right. Bless you, brother. Bless you, too. Yep.